The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. <laughs> Front page news. The Crossley Poll, famous impartial research group, has just finished asking independent tobacco experts, what cigarette do you smoke? More named Lucky Strike than any other brand. Yes, for their own personal smoking enjoyment. Independent tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike, first choice. This impartial Crossley poll shows Lucky's first choice with independent tobacco buyers, auctioneers, and warehousemen. These leaf experts really know tobacco, so you know. LSMFT, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So smoke the smoke tobacco experts smoke, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Remember... For their own personal smoking enjoyment... Independent tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike, first choice. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Benny and his troupe have been on tour, campaigning for the March of Dimes in Denver and Pueblo, Colorado. So now let's pick them up on the California Limited en route to Los Angeles. Mary and Jack are playing a game of gin rummy. Mm, you, you sure are lucky, Mary. I play better gin rummy than you do, and yet you always win. Well, it's your own fault, Jack. You don't concentrate on the cards. I do, too. Now, well, let's see. I know you have three nines, three queens, and a six, seven, and eight of hearts. So I know you can't use this card. Here. Here's the deuce of spades. Gin. <laughs> Gin, let me see your hand. There you are. Three eights, four kings, and three deuces. Wait a minute. Where are those two nines you picked up? That was yesterday. <laughs> oh. Well, go ahead and deal the cards again. Gee, I never played in such bad luck in all of my life. Hey, Jackson, you got a corkscrew? Here you are, Phil. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Gee, I hope I have better luck with this hand than... Pick my... up your cards. Okay. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Jack, pick up your last card. Whoops. <laughs> oh, boy, what a hand this is. Mary, I'm warning you, any card you throw, I can use. Go ahead, throw one. It's your turn first. Oh, yes. Here. Gin. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mary. Well, that's enough gin rummy for me. What do I owe you? Five dollars and twenty cents. All right, I'll pay you tomorrow. Oh, Jack, you always say that. Why don't you pay up as soon as you lose? But, Mary, it's so inconvenient. I don't care. Take off your shoe and pay me now. <laughs> All right, I'll pay you. I'll pay you. Turn around. Turn around? Just because you're going to take your shoe off? The fives are pinned to my underwear. <laughs> Here. Here's your money. Thanks. You're welcome. You know, Mary, you're the luckiest person. Hey, Jackson, you got a bottle opener? Here you are, Phil. Thanks. <laughs> you know, Mary, you're the luckiest person I've ever seen. Oh, what's the difference? You win once in a while, too. Yeah, I guess so. But, you know, we certainly did have a wonderful time in Denver. And, gee, wasn't it exciting when we arrived in Pueblo? They picked us up in those police cars and drove us to the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? When the police were helping Phil in the car, he started yelling, You ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> yeah. You know, Mary, it was too bad that Dennis couldn't have made this trip with us. He'd have gotten a kick out of all that snow. Uh huh. But I don't think he could have stood the train trip. It's awful cold in here. Yeah, but you can't blame the train. I mean, the weather outside is freezing here. 
Oh, hello, Don. Hello. Oh, say, kids, the conductor just told me we're crossing the border into California. Right now? Yes. Gee, it's warm. <laughs> Will we be home soon, Don? No, California's such a big state, we don't get in until tomorrow morning. Gosh, another night on the train. Hey, Jackson, you got any extra glasses in here? Yeah, Phil. Uh, there are three of them over there. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Don, Don, I haven't seen you since we left Denver. Are you on, are you on this car? No, no, I'm two cars back. Two cars back? Wait a minute, Don, that's the diner. I know. Oh. <laughs> Jack, uh, I'm a little hungry. How about sandwiches? All right, Mary, I'll go and get some. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay. Now, let's see. The diner's down this way. Who knows how much I love you? You do. <laughs> Who has the charms that very few do? I do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> dum, da, dum, 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 I beg your pardon, mister. Yes? Could you tell me which way the engine is? The engine? Oh, yes, you're going in the wrong direction. It's the other way. Now, why do you want to know? I'm the engineer. <laughs> I don't know why. You're... The engineer? Hey! Gee, I hope he finds it before we reach Los Angeles. It'll be the first time I ever went to Catalina by rail. <laughs> and with this fog, you know, it could happen. Oh, well, the diner should be in the next... Uh, from what you tell me, Rochester, I can't understand how many Benny ever got along without you. Me neither. Uh-oh. There's Rochester in the washroom talking to one of the porters. I gotta listen to this. Uh, say, Rochester, besides writing his radio show, what else you do for Mr. Benny? <laughs> publicity agent, manager, and last but not least, I'm his personal advisor. He won't even make a picture unless I okay the script. Well, what about the horn blows at midnight? I was out of town when that came in. <laughs> uh, too bad Mr. Benny wasn't. <laughs> no, fine. Yeah, Mr. Benny won't do a thing without my approval. Well, uh, tell me, Rochester, do you help him handle his money? My friend, when Mr. Benny... When you discuss Mr. Benny's money, remove your hat and bow towards the Bank of America. <laughs> well, I can't understand why Mr. Benny saves his money like that. Don't he know he can't take it with him? Well, several people have told him, but he's never heard it direct from headquarters. <laughs> uh, say, Rochester, another thing I've been wanting to ask you. How old is Mr. Benny? Thirty-eight. <laughs> 38. Well, Rochester, I thought about that joke on the radio. Well, in the vernacular we show people, uh, that is known as a running gag. Well, how long has it been running? <laughs> Two years longer than the Mississippi. How do you like that? Now, come on, Rochester. We old friends and we all alone. You can tell me his right age. Well, all right. Lean over here and I'll whisper it. Mr. Benny's real age. Rochester! You knows how much I love you. <laughs> Never mind that. Now, Rochester, I don't like you discussing my private affairs. Yes, sir. And will you please go to the diner and get some sandwiches for me and Miss Livingston? Bring them back to my car. Yes. Hmm. I think he'd know better than to talk about me in front of strangers like that. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, here's Mary's compartment. Gee, Jack, it took you a long time. Where are the sandwiches? Rochester will bring them in a minute. Want to play some more cards, Mary? No, I'd rather listen to the radio. Say, this is Wednesday night, and Dennis' show is on right now. Uh, tune them in, Mary. Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for his final vocal selection tonight, Dennis Day will sing his latest victory recording, A Few More Kisses. Oh, gee, we just caught the end of his program.
things happen. Oh, I may be to blame. I love you more than ever and hope you feel the same. A few more sweet words and a few less teardrops. I'm sure they never would stop. If you just give me a few more kisses and a few less heartaches, sweetheart. Kid has a great voice. You know, it'll be good to see him again, won't it, Mary? Say, Jack, I wonder if we'll have time. Hey, Jackson. <laughs> what? You got a couple of aspirins? <laughs> oh. So you find. <laughs> So you finally got yourself a little hangover. Well, don't expect any sympathy from me, Phil. Jackson, gee, you know how it is. Train trips are dull, all cramped up in a tiny compartment all by myself and away from home. And, well, I got kind of moody, so I don't know. I, I just sat down and started thinking. Oh, well, well, I can understand that, Phil. What were you thinking about? Bourbon. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake. By the way, Phil, I heard your program last Sunday. It was a wonderful show. Robert Taylor did a great job filling in for you. Robert Taylor, Robert Taylor. Some guy to pick out as my replacement. Why, what's wrong with Taylor? What's wrong with him? His real name is Spangler Arlington Brew. <laughs> Spangler Arlington Brew. Well, that sounds like the last names of Manny, Moe, and Jack. <laughs> my right name is Benny Kabelski. What are you mad about? <laughs> Why don't you and him move in together? <laughs> oh, Phil! Phil, stop being jealous. Let him take him. I don't want him. <laughs> oh, Phil, stop being jealous. Bob was wonderful on your show. And the audience gave a terrific hand when he sang That's What I Like About the South. I'll never see what people understand about that lousy song. <laughs> oh, fine. Look who's talking. Hey, Jack. I'm starved. Where's Rochester with those sandwiches? I don't know. I'll go out and look for them. Yeah, da dee da dum, bum bee da dum, da dee da dee da dum. Well, oh, what a cute little baby. Uh, do you do you mind if I play with them for a second, madam? Why, no, not at all. Hello, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Come up here in my arms. Come on. Ups the daisy. Oh, look at him. He's so cute. 
And his eyes are the same color as mine. Lake Louise Blue. Uh, how old is he, lady? 38. <laughs> what? A week. Oh, oh, week. I'll catch you, catch you, catch you, catch you. <laughs> such a cute little thing. Here, take him back, lady. You have a lovely child. Thank you. A little doll that... Hmm, the baby is. Just think, someday he may run for president. The Republicans will make up their minds pretty soon, or maybe this year. <laughs> Where can Rochester be with those sandwiches, I wonder? Da-dum, bum, 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 bum. The best things in life are free. What a song. <laughs> I'm sure this is the car with Well, the... Rochester, what else do you do for Mr. Benny? Everything. There ain't nobody works harder than I do. Mm, instead of getting the sandwich, he's still talking to the porter there. Well, if he works you so hard, why don't you leave? Oh, I couldn't quit Mr. Benny. That would be cruel. What do you mean, cruel? I'm the only man alive who knows how to put him together in the morning. <laughs> to put him together? Yeah, first I get his hair and all the other accessories. Rochester! Coming, mother! <laughs> Rochester, why don't you get those sandwiches? I ordered them, boss. They're sending them down with the waiter. Oh, well, then, then Miss Livingston must have them by this time. I'll go back to my compartment and go to bed. See you in the morning. Um, bum, bum, bum. Pardon me, madam. Pardon me, sir. Pardon me, please. Just a minute, you! <laughs> huh? Say, aren't you Jack Benny? Yes, yes. Well, I I'm a fan of yours. I listen to you all the time on the radio. Oh, really? What's your name? Joe Besser. Messer? No, Bester! <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Are you on your way to Los Angeles? Yes, I'm going to be there for two weeks. And I, I sure would like to get tickets for your program. Say, how do I go about it? Well, I don't handle the tickets myself, but if you call my business manager, Mert Blum, at Hollywood 6265, he'll put you in touch with my secretary, Bert Scott, at Hollywood 6234, you see. And if Mr. Scott hasn't any tickets, he'll have you call the advertising agency. Not so fast! <laughs> Well, look, look, I'll write it down and give it to you before we get off the train. Well, do, well, do, do, do that. I will, I will. What a character, that guy, isn't it? Well, we get in early in the morning. I better get some sleep, I think. Last call for breakfast. Last call for breakfast. Oh, Jack, Jack. Hey, Jackson. Oh, good morning, Mary. Hello, Phil. Hey, kids, according to the timetable, it won't be long now. We've already gone through San Bernardino, Fontana, Anaheim, and we've... There goes Azusa. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, Mary, that's where they had to put off that taxi driver. Remember the one that was so sentimental he couldn't say goodbye to us when he left? Yeah. Remember? Wasn't he a strange character? Yeah. What a silly guy. Hey, look. Look, the train is slowing down. That's right, Jackson. We're coming into Cucamonga. Oh, Jack, Jack. What is it, Don? Your quartet wants to say goodbye to you. The sportsmen? Yes, they're getting off here. In Cucamonga? That's where they live. No kidding, fellas. Do you live here in Cucamonga? Hmm. Well, what do you know about that? Bunga, 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 we get off at Cucamonga and we're glad to be back. For there in Cucamonga, girlies never wear them longer. You will love it, Jack. Just smell those orange trees, lime trees, apricots, smudge pops. We want it clear that no matter how you coax us, we'll stay right here. Oh, bunga, 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 we get off at Cucamonga where we'll meet every boom. He will be there auctioneering, and the crowd will all be cheering as he chants that tune. About those monkeys, first choice, your choice, our choice, we all agree. The lucky spikes find the back of LSMFT. Oh, lucky 
lucky, lucky from Azusa to Kentucky, they're the best in the land. All the native sons and daughters save their nickels and their quarters just to buy that brand. Because they're round and firm and free and easy. Easy on what? We're glad you asked us because we had no rhyme for easy. But what we got? In Azusa and Anaheim, it's the lucky strikes all the time. So Cucamonga, take it away. Wonderful, fellas. Very, very good. And so long, fellas. I'll see you at the studio. Huh? Goodbye. Goodbye, fellas. Goodbye. Los Angeles. Los Angeles Union Station. Your luggage will be taken to the cab stand. Well, Mary, here we are. We're home. Uh, can I brush you off, Miss Livingston? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, brush you off, Mr. Benny? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, brush you off, Mr. Wilson? Please. If you'll turn around, he can brush your back. <laughs> Say, Jack. What? The people seem to be getting off the other end. Well, let's go. Now watch your step, please. Everybody off. Jack, what's holding up the line? I don't know. There's somebody up in front with a lot of bags. Hey, you, get moving. Well, give you... me time to get my luggage. Well, pick it up and get going. Come on, come oh, on. Oh, so fast. Well, we want to get off here. Come on, move, will you? Oh, stop pushing. Oh, you crazy, you. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, kids. Come on. Mary, Phil, we can get off right here. On track five, train just arrived from Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop, come on, <laughs> Come on, kids. We better get out of the cab stand. I hope we won't, we won't, we won't have to wait too long for our luggage there. Train know? just arrived on track five from Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop. There goes the red cap with our baggage, Mary. Uh, let's follow him, huh? Good. He'll take him to the cab stand, then we go right home. Among us. <laughs> he must have gone to Anaheim between Cook and Among us. Oh, Jack, look. There's Dennis. Well, what do you know? Hey, Dennis. Dennis, here we are. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Boy, am I excited. We better hurry or we'll miss the train. <laughs> Miss the train? Yeah, aren't we going to Denver? <laughs> going to Denver, Dennis, we just came back We did last Sunday's show there That's right, Dennis We talked to your doctor And he wouldn't let us take you out of town Yeah How, uh, how you been feeling, kid? Gee, last week I had to visit my doctor five times You visit your doctor five times for a cold? Cold? He's got pneumonia <laughs> Well, Dennis, if your doctor's sick, why did he want you to visit him? He's delirious. He thinks I'm a basket of fruit. <laughs> oh. You should have seen the trouble I had last Sunday. What? And I wanted to get away from him so I could go to the studio and sing on your program. On my program? Dennis, you couldn't have. I wasn't even in town. Gee, I wish you'd have told me. <laughs> So, Dennis, when you got to the studio and you didn't see Don, nor Phil, nor Mary, no musician, what did you think? I thought you were cutting down expenses. <laughs> now, come on, Dennis, let's go home. I see you still have your luggage. All except my coat. Oh, is your coat checked? No, it's my doctor's. <laughs> Jack, 
It's what? been a long train ride. I want to get home. Okay, Mary. Here comes the taxi. Dennis, we'll see you later, huh? Okay. Oh, taxi! Taxi! <laughs> Driver, would you take us out? To... Oh, it's you, mister. You're back. You're back. <laughs> This is the taxi driver that brought us to the station. I didn't want to come to the station, but you made me. You made me. And I couldn't say goodbye. Look, fella. Look. But you're back now. You're back. That's all that matters. Oh, for heaven's sake. Look, fella. I all... hope you had a nice trip. But don't ever go away again. <laughs> I was lost without you. And you too, lady. It's so good to Stop see you. Stop kissing her hand. Look, driver. <laughs> Come on. Put your bags in the car. Put your bags in the car. We're going home. We're going home. Driver, you're creating a scene here. I don't care. I'm so glad you're Taxi back. Taxi driver. Look at Happy days are here again. Drive. I'm so glad you're clear again. So Not so fast. Home. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you agree there's nothing more pathetic than a helpless child suffering from starvation, exposure, and sickness. Thousands of kids in the devastated countries are exactly in this predicament and can't do a thing to help themselves any more than yours or mine could. So it's up to us to give them a chance to survive. We must help them grow up to be healthy, clear-thinking citizens, or our own children will have to face more serious problems than even we do now. So let's help those unfortunate children by sending our contributions to Crusade for Children, New York City. Incidentally, they have a great slogan, Save a Child, Save the Future. Thank you. <laughs> Jack, we'll be back in just a minute, but first, here's Basil Rysdale. For their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike, first choice. Front page news. In the nation's great tobacco markets, the impartial Crossley poll asked independent tobacco experts, What cigarette do you smoke? More, said Lucky Strike, than any other brand. Yes, for their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts name Lucky Strike, first choice. These experts are independent tobacco buyers, auctioneers, and warehousemen. The men who see who buys what tobacco. Friends, when independent tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice in an impartial Crossley poll, then you know. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke the smoke tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike. Remember, for their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to listen in next Sunday night when our guests will be my next-door neighbors and very good friend, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.